Okay, good morning, folks. Um, we're going to do another trial here um, to see how the car fares today. Uh, current temperature is 31 degrees, and I have a charge of 260 miles. Um, now, it was in the garage all evening, um, so I know that it's been a little bit warmer. Um, but here's the uh, some of the issues still is that um, I still show no PSI on my uh, tires. And... Um, and I'm still getting the surround uh, warning here. And I'll flip it around and show you guys. Okay, so 260 miles of charge. 31 degrees. I'm still showing this surround vehicle display warning. And I'm showing no PSI on my tires. Um, so I just think that something's going on with the car itself. Um, last night I did uh, fill up the tires um, to 42 it showed 44 on the screen, but now this morning it's not showing anything. So um, let's see how we fare today as far as range and drain is concerned. All right, folks. Okay, so the good thing is, is at least the tire pressure warning did turn off this morning. And you can quickly see that the temperature is already getting colder as we left the garage. Uh, it's now 26 degrees. Uh, sorry for the bounciness there. Um, we are supposed to get a high temp of 24 today and a low of 14. So we're going to see how that the, this car fares uh, being parked for nine hours today. Okay, we made it here to work and I have 186 miles of range left out of 260. We drove 52 miles. Um, so we basically have a 20 mile um, loss, which is better than yesterday with the tires. Um, that could have been partly the reason why, um, but we're going to see what we lose this afternoon. So 186, the car is going to be out here in a parking lot for about nine hours or so. And, uh, you know, we'll see what kind of loss we have today. Again, cold temperatures, 25 degrees, and uh, we'll check back in a little bit. Okay, it is the end of the day, folks. And uh, hey, back there, you can see my reflection. Um, so 167 miles uh, left uh, today. So we actually lost 19 miles uh, sitting idle uh, today. However, I would like to note that I did preheat the vehicle for about eight minutes um, prior to me coming out to it. So yeah, maybe a little bit of drain there, but um, still, I think that's quite a bit. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below. Are you guys seeing the same thing? Are you seeing less or more? What are you doing to prevent some of this loss? It would be uh, helpful to the community. Um, you know, for you guys to help uh, help us all out and post your comments down below and let us know what uh, what you've been doing, what you've been seeing, and uh, we'll take it from there. So, all right, hey, good morning, folks. Uh, day three of our test for our drain and our battery uh, range, as it is very cold again today. And uh, you know, we're going to do this probably one or two more times just to get a good feel of. Uh, what our actual loss is uh, during this cold weather. And it's really not even that cold yet. I mean, yes, it's it's cold for the time of season, um, but uh, we have a long winter ahead of us and uh, the 20s and 30s are not, um, are not that cold. We will get down into uh, the single digits and of course below zero um, many times this year. So a um, little concerned about that, but let's do this, this test for the third day and see where we are. Let me turn this around and give you the the battery range, where we're at, where our charge is, and uh, we'll keep moving along. Okay, today we have 258 miles of range. I did preheat this morning, I was at 260. Um, it's 28 degrees out, and uh, again, we have about another 50 some mile drive uh, commute back into work today. So um, again, I'm trying to average around 73 miles an hour um, as we move through um, the commute uh, each and every day. Uh, the first day when it snowed, it was not uh, was much less than that, and that was the the highest loss thus far between that day and the second day. So let's see what today is. Okay, a couple cool things to note here: my tire pressure actually um, sort of leveled out over the last couple days. Again, it's just as cold today as it was yesterday, but you could see it's it's normal. Uh, it's fluctuated between the tires a little bit, but um, it was saying, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, 44 even though I tested it with my tire tire gauge at 42 um, And now you can see it's still a little bit all over, but I'm not getting any warnings and I'm also not getting the um, 
the surround wording that I was getting the last couple of days. So we'll see if that continues to be the case um, throughout the commute. All right, so it looks like uh, the driving is back to normal. I now have my traffic aware cruise control and my autopilot icons back. Um, all of the cars and vehicles are being displayed correctly from behind and in front. Uh, so excited to see that, but I have no idea why I was getting that surround vehicle uh, information uh, warning. And the car was just really goofy over the last couple days. But uh, we're going to see. Hopefully it stays that way. I did receive a um, notification for an update, which I did not do. Um, last night I'll, I'll check it out tonight if I have time and and see what uh, what that's about so at least I'm happy that the cars back to normal somewhat okay so we have uh, we had a charge of 257 miles this morning uh, we drove 52.8 uh, used 319 watt hours a mile um, so basically we are short 16 miles um, so we lost 16 miles yeah I had to heat on um, the majority of the time and I wish Tesla would update um, something here to give us some a little more um, information at our fingertips so we could do some better calculations. But um, if they gave us an average speed or, you know, something of that nature to be able to uh, compare to. But essentially, um, try to stick around 70, 73 miles an hour. There were a couple times where I had to go slightly above that. Um, I still think that's a little bit high. Um but uh, yeah, there we are, folks. So that's that's where we're at today. A little bit better than yesterday, and of course, a lot better than the previous day. So let's see what um, what it has to offer. You can see I have an update here. I'm not quite sure um, what this is. This is probably the cold weather update that Tesla is pushing out. I'm not quite sure if I want to do that or not, but we'll see uh, what happens at the end of the day today and see what kind of drain we have while it is sitting idle. Okay, cool. So here we are, folks, at the end of the day. Um, we have 180 miles um, on the battery right now with a loss of 8 miles today. Um, today wasn't that long of a day. It is still fairly cold out, uh, 28 degrees. Um, so the car did much better today um, just sitting idle than it has in the past couple of days. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile um, the list of... Um, days and times and how much drain we had each day coming to work and then it's sitting idle um, so we can just get a synopsis of, of what we actually lost and what the differences are because to be honest with you there isn't much difference the weather actually is about the same so I'm not quite sure um, what was going on but the car definitely was acting weird the past two days um, today everything seemed to be fine autopilot and traffic aware cruise control were working I wasn't getting the weird um PSI warnings or the other warning for uh, the, the vehicle surround um, information not working. So uh, again, I didn't do any updates. It automatically just fixed itself, which is cool. I have a self-healing car. How awesome is that? Um, but again hey, all right, everybody. I just wanted to welcome you into my home so we can finish up the uh, part two and part three of our battery range and winter driving test. So let's get started. Okay, everybody. So uh, we have driven the car for three days and essentially took the same exact route tried to drive the same speed however on day one we were a little bit below we were about anywhere between 60 and 65 miles an hour due to the snow uh, but day two and day three we tried to average about 73 between 70 and 73 miles per hour now if you go back i won't i won't bore you with that but I had stated earlier on in one of the videos that it would be nice if Tesla gave us some kind of indication of what our average speed was and things like that so we can better calculate range and distance and you know basically how, how we're doing based on, on our driving. Yes, we know the slower that we drive, the better our range, but did I just break a theory because I'm gonna show you some data that looks back at that past three days um, with the with the information I just provided now it may be a mile or two off but literally um, I put on cruise control when I could um, on day two and day three when the surround vehicle warning issue went away and I was allowed to be able to um, use those features so I really did try to stick to it as, as much as I possibly could 
And um, of course, there are some other variables. Uh, but what I would like to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the chart. Um, I did a little data analysis. And please don't make fun of my chart. Um, I'm not a chart guy. I just wanted to give you some, some visual representation of some of the data um, that we have collected over the past couple of days and just break that out in a chart. And then I did a bar graph as well, just so we can uh, quickly and easily see the data as it is represented um, in, in um, a visual format. So let's take a look at this and uh, see what we have here. I think some of you may be surprised, some of you may not be, but what I did wanna say is that I do believe that the first day something was going on with the car and it just wasn't, wasn't right right so the surround vehicle warning issue occurred uh the tire pressure issue occurred i couldn't use uh tac or traffic aware cruise control or autopilot um and the car ate up a bunch of range that day 45 miles in total uh 25 driving and another 21 sitting idle um and then it got better um after that warning went away drastically in my opinion and what I think happened, and some of you may or may not be aware of this, but sometimes um, when, you, when your car has some kinds of warnings like that, where there's issues, you know, it sends out that information to Tesla. And Tesla actually is looking at that. So what I think happened is actually Tesla saw the issue and fixed it before I can call the service center, which was about um, a two-day period, maybe a little bit less than that. So um, after that issue uh, cleared up, the car was actually back to normal and I was getting the normal range that I would typically see um, in warmer weather in the colder weather. So let's take a look at the data again. Don't make fun of my charts, um, but I just wanted to give you something, you know, that you can visually see um, instead of me just sitting here in front of the camera, just talking to you guys about it um, of some of the data that I captured. And if there's something that you do don't see and would like to let me know, I pretty much have it all. Um, I just didn't want to get it too granular. I just wanted to keep it at a high level here um, just so we can just quickly go over it and compare the first to third day. Now we can um, debate, should we do it further? Yeah, we probably should do it for a couple more days, but this was just a quick little experiment just to see what it was. Um, I didn't anticipate having all those problems uh, day one with the car. Um, and when it snows again, we'll probably do another one, hopefully maybe a little bit shorter of a video, but um, yeah. So let's take a look at this and see what we have folks. And please don't forget to comment down below um, with any questions or concerns you might have. Uh, and let's try to break this down for the community so that we have something to share for everybody um, so they can learn from uh, what I have been through and experienced over the past couple of days. Okay, so here we go, folks. Um, let's just start out with the um, data information that I had put together here to create the chart, um, just so you understand what uh, criteria I used and where I'm getting my information from. So I have beginning battery range, and this is the range that I had when I left the house that morning, the miles driven for that day, and this was just my one-way commute to work, um, the watt hours uh, per mile um, that I had used during that trip, the outside temperature, the loss of range while driving. Um, so this is the uh, total battery range available minus the miles driven, and then what was remaining when I arrived. Um, and then I also had here a category, because we did talk about this, is the lost range while sitting idle for the day. And then we did a total range loss for the day, and then the remaining mileage uh, for that day. So um, you can see here that this is a little bit off, and I think this is this day one here was what when it was snowing, and possibly that 53 miles could be um, slightly due to some tire spins and things that I was doing, just messing with the car. But on average, it's about 53 miles a day. Um, on day one, we had used uh, 335 watt hours a mile. Um, day two, a little bit less. And then on day three, even less. Now, I will note here on day three, I was traveling between 70 and 73 miles per hour. So you can see that um, it should be less. Um, but uh, here, nonetheless, it's, it's still a little bit higher than I would think it should be. But that's what we used. The outside temperature, you could see on this day, it was actually even colder than day one when it was snowing and then day two. And then also to recap, 
On day one and day two, this is where I saw the surround vehicle warning and the, t uh, the tire pressure issue as well. Um, by day three, it was all taken care of. So day one, we lost 25 miles of range while driving, day two, 20, and then day three, 16. So about, um, you know, a few miles less. I mean, that, that is actually pretty significant uh, when you look at it, nine miles. Yeah, maybe not that significant, but it is. It's, um, it adds a few miles to the commute uh, that I don't have to worry about if I had to stop somewhere or whatever um, to give me some additional range there. So that was nice to see. Um, and then here's a big one. So the first day, 20 miles of range lost while, while idle. And I know there's been a lot of comments on the previous video um, that that's about average. But if you look, as we got through the days uh, to day three, eight miles. This day was a little bit shorter in time um, that the car was idle, but I'm talking no more than 30 minutes. Um, so uh, not that big of a deal there, but quite a difference um, from 20 to eight as far as idle range. Um, and then um, the overall was 45 miles of range lost between driving and idle time on day one, 39 on day two, and 24 on day three. And we started out with uh, 258 miles on day three. We were remaining 181.2. And you can see a pretty significant increase in available range at the end of the day. So um, let's look at this graphically. And so you guys can just see um, what it all looks like. Um, hopefully it's not too confusing, but basically the blue is the uh, beginning battery range. Uh, the green is the miles driven, and you can see that it's fairly close. And then, of course, the range loss is in yellow, um, and you can just see um, still quite a bit of dif distance between um, 25 and 16. Um, let's see if we can get it to look a little bit better for you so you can see the difference. Um, and then we have the third block is our loss um, of range when we were idle. Um, that sort of overlapped there, but that's eight, um, as I stated above. And then we have the total loss range for that day. And then the remaining range um, at the end of the day when I was heading home. And then, of course, the uh, watt hours uh, per mile. So, um, yeah, so pretty cool. I, I think that um, that day one, th there was definitely something there. Um, that skewed um, this day's data. And, you know, I'm going to have to start this over again, and we're going to do it when we get a nice snowstorm so we can all go through it and really ch test it and see not just the range, but the, um, the ability of the car itself as it drives through the snow. And I know it was a little bit icy that day, the first day um, that I did shoot that video. So we're just going to test it again, and we'll, we'll do another video just to go through this. So um, I just wanted to say thank you all for tuning in and spending uh, your time with me um, going through this range loss and just the, the cold weather winter experience. Um, and wanted to say that um, if you are interested in purchasing a Model 3, a Model S, or a Model X, please, folks, feel free to use my referral code. I'm going to go ahead and link it down below. Um, we would love to be able to get to an event um, at some point in time. And also, I do want to um, shout out for those who have ordered uh, through our referral link. Thank you very much. And again, we are also offering a 15% discount, or I should say Abstract Ocean is offering you, our viewers, a 15% discount um, on any accessories that uh, you may want for your Model 3 S or X. Um, just head out to abstractocean.com and at checkout, uh, put the code word, the buzz in, and you will receive your 15% discount. So please, folks, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, I'm trying to bring home some, some good content um, to you. And also with that being said, if there is something that you would like to see me do, uh, please jot that down or send me an email. That link is below as well. And I will be happy to do that for you. So folks, thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day.